Okay, so we've made it to module four now, and we're going to talk about working with customers and jobs in this particular module. Now this is section one where we're actually going to get into actually setting up those customers and jobs. Now we're going to be talking now about this accounts receivable section that's right in here. And remember, pretty much anything that happens with customers will be in this particular section. Now customers are people or businesses that buy from you. Sometimes a customer might have you do multiple jobs for them and you want to track those separately. So you have the ability to do that in QuickBooks. You can look at the customer as a whole or track the jobs you do for them as separate entities. Now what I'd like to do is we've been working so far in this company that we had created. So why don't we close this company and we'll go and open one of the sample files that QuickBooks has. So let's click on the file option and then close company log off. Now we're going to open a sample file from right here and I told you that all of you have these sample files. So if we click the down arrow we'll have a couple of choices we can pick from. Let's open the sample product based business. Now what you're going to notice is that when we open this it's going to tell me that QuickBooks is going to use today's date as December 15th 2020. So we'll click OK. Now our sample file is a construction company. It's called Rock Castle Construction. And this will be a great example of how customers and jobs work. And remember, if your company doesn't use jobs, then don't worry about it. This still works and everything still applies to you. So here's how you're going to get to your list of customers. You're going to what's called the Customer Center, and you're going to get to it right here. Now this is what your customer center looks like, so I want to take a few minutes and just kind of go through it with you so you'll know what you're looking at. So first of all, I want you to notice this is your list of customers. If you can't see the entire column, just put your mouse where the column headings meet and drag and make your columns a little bit wider if you need to do that. So this is my list of customers and jobs. Notice the jobs are indented a little underneath each customer. Notice in my case they're in alphabetical order by last name. So when we enter a new customer we want to continue that same series. Now you've got the balance for each customer on the right or the balance for that job and this last column is an attachment. So if you had an Excel file for example related to this particular customer you can actually attach that file right here and that way you won't have to get out of QuickBooks and go over to Excel and open it up. You can just open it right from here if it was attached. Now as far as how this list is sorted, I just told you it was sorted alphabetical by last name and I'm looking at the active customers. Notice if I click on active customers I could just look at the customers that have an open balance if I wanted or just the ones with an overdue balance so I can kind of see the list any way I like there. Also notice to the right of that it says show full list and if I click this arrow I'm going to see the full list of customers and now I can see the balance any notes for that customer and the attachments. If I want to collapse that back then I just go back to the left arrow show list and details and click on it and it looks like it did before. Now this box here allows you to search for a customer if you wanted to do that. Now notice also there is another tab called transactions and if I click on that what I see is all the different types of transactions I can have and I can see which customers those transactions apply to. So you can look at either tab customers and jobs or transactions. Now on the right hand side what I'm going to see is information about the customer I'm clicked on and if you can't see everything in the top part of the window Notice where the window splits, you can click and drag down if you needed to get a little more room here. And now I can see all of the information about the customer. I can see their address, I can see their email address. Over here if I had some notes, notice if I point to this it's going to show me the notes, but unless I click in there it's not going to show me the latest note. Reports for customers, I've got several reports down here I can run as well about my customers. Now let me pull this back up so we can see what's on the bottom here. So starting with the transactions tab. These are transactions for the customer that you're clicked on. So you're going to find in QuickBooks there's many ways to search for transactions. I can actually under edit, I can use the find feature. 
There's just all kinds of ways to search. This is usually the best way if you know what customer you're looking for. You can click the customer and then find the transaction you want to go to. Now, the way these are set up here is I'm looking currently at all the transactions, but notice that I could click the down arrow and look at just invoices, just estimates. You can kind of see the list there. Also, I can look at them by specific dates. Currently, I'm looking at the fiscal year, but I could look at them by yesterday, last week, last month, last fiscal quarter. There's just different ways to look at them by date as well. Now you'll see the date column is the one that it's sorted by in this case because there's a little down arrow there, but you could sort by any of these just by clicking the column heading and sorting. Now notice at the bottom it says manage transactions and there's an arrow. I do have the ability from here to create one of these transactions. Now just know that you're probably not going to be on this screen when you're ready to create a new invoice for a customer, but if you happen to be, then this is a way to do it. Also notice I can run some reports for that customer over here. Basically it's going to view these transactions in a report format. Now let's click on the contacts tab. These would be contacts for the particular customer I happen to be clicked on. So this might be someone at the office that you need to speak to when you make phone calls there. It could be the actual contact person that set up the job. So you can have as many contacts as you like. The way you actually create the contacts is down at the bottom where it says manage contacts. You can click the down arrow and you can add a new one. Notice this is also where you'd edit a contact or delete one. Now the to-dos tab. To-dos are things you have to take care of related to a customer. Here's a list of the different types of to-dos. There's phone calls, faxes, emails, meetings, appointments, and tasks. So you can actually set any of these up so that you can keep a record of all the things that you've done for that particular customer. The way you manage the to-dos is at the bottom of the list. You'll notice the down arrow, and there's where you create a new one. You can also run this list of to-dos as a report if you'd like to do that as well. Now next are the notes. If you have notes for a particular customer, you're going to be able to set them up here. You actually come down here and add new this way. Now what you're going to notice is that here's the notes that have been created and this one has a little pin. So that means that's the important one, the one you want to see automatically. If I clicked up here where it says notes, notice that's the particular one that shows up automatically because I had pinned it. So in a minute when we set up our new customer, I'll show you how to do that. Now the last tab is the sent email. Now in versions prior to 2015, you could send forms through email. But what happens with 2015 and 16 now is that QuickBooks will track the list of those sent emails. Just like if you were in your email, you could see the sent messages that way as well. So prior to 2015, you had to go over to your email and see it that way. Now you can see them actually in this list. So those are the types of things that you can see or work with when it comes to customers in this screen. So let's take a peek at your icon by here at the top and see what we've got. Now here's how you're going to create a new customer and job, so we'll do that here in just a few minutes. And also there's an option for new transactions. So again, another way, if I wanted to create a new estimate, an invoice, a sales receipt, I could do that right here. But chances are I'm not going to be on this window when I'm ready to create one of those transactions. Here's your print option. So if you want to print a list of your customers, if you need to print a list of your job information, you could print it that way. Notice the Excel option. So one of the newer features that you have is that you can import or export your customers to or from Excel. So that way it would save you typing a lot of those in here one at a time or export them if you need to work with them outside of QuickBooks for some reason. Notice you can also export transactions and also this paste from Excel lets you copy and paste information into QuickBooks. Now the Word option, this is where the mail merging comes in. So we're actually going to cover that in a later module. But if you wanted to send collection letters, for example, 
Maybe all of your customers that are over 30 days overdue, you want to send them a letter. You'll be able to do that here, and it actually works with Microsoft Word and does a mail merge and sends those letters to those customers. Now the last little option here is called the Income Tracker, and we're actually going to go through this in the last section of this module, but it's just a quick way to kind of see your customers, how many estimates you have out there, overdue invoices, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and close that for a moment. And then that's actually going to take us back to our customer information window. Now these two buttons here allow you to attach a file. This will actually let you go out and pick the file you'd like to attach. Or you can actually edit your customer from here. If I click here I can edit a customer. Or you can double click a customer as well to edit them. So either one of those would work. So that gives you a quick overview of the screen itself and how it works. So why don't we go ahead and do this. We're getting close to the 12 minute mark here, so let's go ahead and stop the video here. And there is a part two to module four, so let's go ahead and look at part two and we'll actually set up a customer there and you'll see how that's done. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the Learn More button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.